well-oiled machine going right now because Paul Harvey was saying those things in the 1970s and we are witnessing all of that now. Well, it appears that we have Jonathan Kayall on, on the line here. We'll be bringing him on. He is a YouTube creator and he's also a street preacher. He's got quite an interesting uh, life uh, for such a young man. And he's overcome a lot of obstacles, and he is a, a warrior for the kingdom of God. So hopefully uh, Willie will be joining us also as I send him a message. Uh, let's see here. Willie. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, so hopefully he will be able to join us. But right now, in his debut, we're going to bring on Jonathan Kayall. And I hope, like I said, I hope I am pronouncing that correctly. Welcome, yeah, you brother, pronounced John. Right, brother. You said I you did pronounce, pronounce it right, correctly. Yes, sir. Yes, you did. Kayall, okay. Uh, okay, I've got oh, yeah, my on here so we don't have any echo going on. Uh, okay. As we're waiting, like I said, waiting for Mr. Mr. Richardson. But anyway, I want to welcome you to Politics and Prophecy in your debut. I believe that you said that you this is your first time being on, on radio. Uh, well, I, I called in before this. I didn't know the radio before. No. But other okay. than that, like, nah, that's yeah. Oh, but you've yeah. never been the star attraction, though, right? Nah, of course not, man. I don't even agree with that word star. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh-uh. No. <laughs> Praise God, though. You know? Hey, man, thank I'll you. I'll tell you what. Oh, the God. Let's see here. All right. Now, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. I just put my, my headphones on uh, because when I speak to guests, sometimes I run into, being that I don't have a soundproof studio, I can get an echo. Uh, so this takes care of that. Now, before we get started, let me see. I'm going to check. Uh, okay, let me see here. I have to get Willie's number and uh, and call him. Uh, so we'll, we'll do. Uh, let me do this real quick here, okay. and then we'll okay. we'll uh, say a prayer and, and get this this yeah. interview started. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Come on, man. Where's your number at? Um. All right. Well, I tell you what. While I'm doing this, why don't you? Share with the audience a little bit about your uh, your past, your journey in Christ, and and uh, mm. you know your life. Tell us a little bit about well, yourself. Well, well, I'm gonna have to. Uh, you're gonna have to help me, brother, because I kind of get carried away. So let me know if I'm doing too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I, don't have no I gotta. Mute. I gotta. I gotta mute, but don't worry. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right, so check it out. Like, I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? I came to Christ 2008, uh, November 23rd. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I came to Christ in jail, D.C. jail. You know what I'm saying? Got locked up for a handgun, sitting in the back seat, stupid enough to tell the police it's okay that he can search me when he asked. Right? <laughs> if I had to know. But thank God I did it, though, huh? And so anyway, mm-hmm. man, you know, then I came to the Lord. After a while, my mother kept giving me some dreams and prophecies while I was in there for like my first, I'd say my first week. She was giving me a couple of dreams that God was giving her. You know what I'm saying? He told her that uh, if I had uh, been free um, by December 9th, I would have been murdered. And he showed her a shootout where uh, I got in a shootout uh, with this project called Lincoln like Heights, like a few blocks away from where she used to stay in uh and then he stopped the dream. He showed her, he showed me 
he showed her me going to Lincoln Heights, and he showed her the people from Lincoln Heights. It was a whole bunch of people, me by myself, but it was a whole bunch of people from the project coming towards me. And um, and then they was about to uh shoot at me, and I was about to shoot at them, and she was trying to stop. And then the dream stopped, and then she heard the voice of the Lord quote uh. If my people who are called on my name humble themselves and pray to my face, you know what I mean? Then I'll turn, and they they turn from their wicked ways, and I'll humble, the, uh, then I'll hear their prayer, and I'll hear them from heaven and forgive their land. And so, you know, I was like, I wasn't ready to repent. You know what I mean? But I repented, I repented not that long after that. Hello? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, like, um, I guess. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, I think we got. I think we. No, we don't. I don't know what, why this is coming through. This uh, while we're getting this. Yeah, no problem. Bro. Okay, we got to stop this. All right. Uh, keep, keep on going because uh, uh, something something is ringing on here, and, and I don't know what is going on. But we're gonna get this straightened out here. The devil is a liar. Let's see here. Um, what is going on? Where is that coming from? Okay. All right, we got that stuff. Well, you know what? I uh, praise God for that. I don't know what's going on, really, where he's at, but I. Go ahead, and I'll let you. I'll let you lead off in prayer, and then we'll get into the topic that I wanted to address. Oh. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, like, uh, <clears throat> what happened after that? Um, no, I said go so oh, into prayer. Let's go into prayer. Oh, go into we'll, prayer. So, yeah. Okay. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I just thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. I bless you by the name, Lord God. I appreciate the opportunity, Lord God. We thank you for my brother. Uh, Chris Lovers, Lord God, may you strengthen him in every area, Lord God. May you bless his ministry, Lord God. May you bless this ministry, Lord God, the, that I have, Lord God. May you bless all the listeners, Lord God, that um that they may be encouraged, that they may see the light of Christ, that they may see the understanding that you bring forth, that they may uh, see uh, how you how you make uh, corrections and how you can um, fizzle through. Uh, misunderstandings and, and, and straighten paths and, 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 and make what appears to be difficult simplistic, Lord God. And we thank you, Jesus, for that, Lord God. <clears throat> we thank you, Lord God, because you want us to understand, Lord God. We thank you for understanding, Lord God. You said in your word, um, in all in all your uh, getting, get understanding, Lord Jesus. So we just thank you for understanding, Lord God. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for breath today. We thank you for life. Lord God, we thank you for our limbs working, Lord God. We thank you for our health, Lord God. We thank you for everybody, Lord, the persecuted saints, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you uh, how we can be encouraged by them. Help us to, Lord God, just continue to be reminded that the times we're in, Lord God, and uh, Lord, to just endure, Lord God. Help us to endure. Help us to, to be compassionate and merciful and kind and loving. Lord God, may you bless this, this, uh, this, uh, what is this podcast, this radio station, Lord God, that Lord, but we bind up every act of the devil, every every trick of the enemy, Lord, and we bind it up right now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God. We bind up everything that he wants to do in these power uh, airwaves, Lord God, and we loose him off of this this whole platform in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We loose him off of our household, Lord God, any any little spiritual tactics that he comes with, Lord God. We ask that you cover in the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Well, let me see. We're what is going on? Um, well, I thank you for that prayer. As we get into a topic, like I said, um, Lord, I better say, uh, Lord, uh, please watch over my friend and brother Willie right now. Oh yeah, because brother, for him you. not to be. Brother. For him not to be here, Lord Jesus, I know what he's yes, going Lord. through in his life, Lord Jesus, and I ask that no matter yes, what Jesus. the enemy, how the enemy comes against him, Lord Jesus, that you will raise yes, a standard up against every device that the enemy can even dream of yes, bringing this man down and distracting him yes, from the ministry and the purpose that he has yes, in Lord. you, in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Yes, Lord. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you know, one of the things that caught my attention about you was your uh, willingness to take on thorny subjects that many in uh, Christendom want to either sugarcoat or just ignore and put their heads in the sand altogether. So today, I wanted to address uh, the idea of whether or not, because I guess we're going to use this as 1 Corinthians, the basis for this is going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And in fact, uh, let, me pull, let me pull that up. Uh, let's see here. First Corinthians. Okay. Six. All right. Now, what it says, dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No. Not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So, that, you know, and, and it's something just reading that again because it, he, uh, Paul repeats that in Galatians uh, chapter 5, 19 to 21, when he lists those sins. Now, we can get into a whole nother discussion. Especially about that first one that he said yeah. that he mentioned in chapter nine, where he says neither fornicators, and then the list goes uh-huh. on. And, you know, I know that you have right, your right. your your uh your you have your teachings on on that particular topic. But that's I have no problem where... hopping into that right now, my brother. <laughs> no, that's real not fast though. At. Real fast though. No, no, you no, know we're gonna stay on track. We're gonna stay on track. Okay, all right. Me. If, if we exhaust what what uh the topic that that I uh, have on mind and had in mind, then then we'll uh we'll touch on that. But yes, sir. Today we're talking about marriage. Okay. There's marriage is marriage God's institution or the state's institution? Number one. Number one question. Number two. If it is God's institution. Why do we, why do we subject as saints subject ourselves to the state and their marriage licenses and so forth uh-huh. and so on and even when it comes to the dissolution of marriages why do we allow the unbelievers to deal with us instead of being within the church body to deal with that so that's where that's where I'll start off and I'll just let you. Uh, let you go go with it. See what your what your opinion is. Well, I don't feel like I have an opinion. I I don't even feel like I have one. Um, because first off, it says when God joins together, let no man separate. And so God joined together Adam and Eve, and He's already given us by nature, um, the desire for a woman and a woman the desire for a man and we know to do it God's way. So that was already established in the beginning of time. You know, I mean, I don't think that that's the debate. Especially no, the that's not the God. debate. Right. Yeah. Okay, and so then, we, we and then established so, that, yeah, that institution is between not only because all we know that all marriages are not ordained of God because of the fact that you have people 
that, uh, for instance, in 21st century America, if you have an unbeliever marry an unbeliever, you're already in disobedience. If you have an unbeliever, marry an unbeliever. If you if you're a believer and you marry an unbeliever, oh, okay. you're yeah, already yeah. in disobedience. Uh huh. Yeah, that's true. So you're not that is not ordained by God. That was that you went on you went on a game show and Satan was the host and said if you go, you take this one. Well, uh, so amen. go ahead. But uh, well like let I me said, well let me we're, we're talking about. Should we, I'm talking about people, I'm the ordained marriages, again, should we be getting marriage licenses from the state, or should this be something that should be in the churches? That's what I'm asking. Okay, well, before you even, before we go there, I just want to answer you about, yeah, it's not ordained by God for a man of God to marry a woman of God, a woman of God to, I mean, excuse me, a man of God to marry an unbeliever, or a woman of God to marry an unbeliever. Sure, that's not of God, but the difference is that we're not to be unequally yoked across the board. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? However, mm-hmm. what, 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 what separates the one from the other is that once you are uh, unequally yoked and that marriage is already established, you know, you you stuck. You ain't stuck with unbelievers though. When you just you know being a, a man who's just going about his day, you know running errands, uh, grocery shop. You ain't totally just kicking it with unbelievers. But when you joined yourself to a wife and you're a man of God, oh you stuck. The same thing applies to a, a a woman of God. So that's the difference with that. I just wanted to touch that real quick. That's that's the difference with that when it comes to unbelievers and believers. But but as far as um is it you know uh, go, should we go to the law to get married? Well, I mean that that that's Romans thirteen right there. You know, let every soul be subject to the higher power. You know, for there's no power but but of God. I'm reading right now the powers that are the are, are ordained of God. So and 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 here's the kicker. I've heard people you know doubt that like oh man maybe we shouldn't go to the the world you know maybe we should go to the uh the jurisdiction of the law and, and all these things and, and and they say this because of what mankind can do because they talk about well you know uh you get social you get you get pregnant you have a child um you get a social security number for the baby they can take a child we don't live according to what man can do so i just wanted to because i don't know if what route we was going, but I just wanted to, because I've heard this a number of times, and I guess that's just the evangelism something to me, always kind of knowing what people going, I don't know, I don't know, I can't say, but I'm just saying I've heard this a lot of times, enough for me to attack that this way right here, because a lot of people try to make this a challenge for a man of God, a woman of God to get married, but we don't even, it's not even faith to, to, to be wondering like, you know, what somebody can do. All the time. That's not, I couldn't even brush my teeth if I was doing that. I couldn't even go out and make it out the door. You know, mm-hmm. uh, what somebody can do. You know what I mean, like, like, I mean, you know, I know where you stay and you know where I stay. <laughs> In the cities like us, like ours, and and we wonder what somebody can do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Give give me some feedback, my brother. Well, I'm not talking about what we can do because you brought up. It's interesting you brought up. Romans 13, because yesterday I was sharing out of a book, Make the Pulpit, Read Again, and he deals directly with the misunderstanding that Christians apply to uh, Romans 13 and how it is used by the authority to actually shut down a lot of the things that Christians do. Because if that was if Romans 13 is applied by a lot of Christians in America today, uh, that, you know, where the, the uh, authorities are ordained of God, this, that, and the other. Well, guess what? God did not sit up there and put Hitler on his throne, and no Christian should have been, you know, doing what the Nazis were supposed to do. Why didn't God put Hitler on his throne? Because he didn't want to. Well, first of all, God did I would, let's, go, let's go to Hosea. 
Let's go to Hosea uh-huh. and see what yeah, that I says as far as um, what it yeah. says about those princes and stuff that God never knew. Uh, let's yeah, go here. But you hear what he said, though. Hosea. He said what he said in, in, in Hosea. My brother. Go ahead. You no, know, I said, you hear what he said, though, in Hosea. For what you're about to go to, you hear, you hear what he said, though, you know? Let's, let's go, well, go ahead and say what you got to say, because what, you, what you're getting at. Well, you know, he said, uh, what did he say? You, uh, uh, he said, you, you, you wanted a king, and, and I gave you one of my wrath? Is that, I'm paraphrasing. No. You know? Uh, That's uh-huh. not it? But you know that uh-huh. he said it, though. Because they the okay, a good and great thing. Yeah, well, that was in you're talking about. Oh, well, I'm thinking Samuel that you're talking about when uh, when Samuel when the people of Israel were talking about a king. Israel, okay, I'm gonna get this. Let's see. Um, yeah, he definitely said it on Hosea. Princess, princess. Okay, princess. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 keep on going. Hosea thirteen eleven. That's what I was thinking you was talking about. No, that's not it. But we, I'm getting there. But he, because uh, he said, I gave thee a king in my in mine anger, and took him away in my wrath. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, that was God. After I, after I find this, come on, it's, it's too many. They're all going, uh, oh, duh, make it easy on yourself. Here we go. Um, okay. Now, now we're getting somewhere. So they return the princes. They have said, there we go. Hosea 8. I knew it was somewhere in there. Uh, okay. Hosea 8, 4. They have set okay. up kings, but not by me. They have mm-hmm. made princes, and I knew it not. Of their mm-hmm. silver and their gold have they made them idols that they may be cut off and you go uh, mm-hmm. further. In that. But, by, but the thing is, the point being is that if a man, like, uh, and, and the purpose of government, the purpose of government, as God ordained it, is as a restrainer against evil, not to be perpetrators of evil. Amen. I agree. A thousand percent. Yes, sir. So when they tell us that we have to sit up there and because if we're doing the Romans 13 thing, okay, so the government says that two men can get married and two women can get married. And as a pastor, uh, I'm supposed to do that because that's the law of the land. No, you're not. No, you're not. Because I mean, it's not yeah, I mean, God's law. <laughs> I mean, I mean, but. Saints of God ain't talking like that. No, no, saints of God are not. But again, we're getting into that, and I'm saying that, that actually okay. I'm not saying that the discussion is actually about the fact that if we look at history, up until really basically in the last century, in the 20th century, really that up until then, you know, people died, they did, they got married, they were legally recognized as being married through the church. Say there was no okay. such thing as leaders license. And that's okay. just another way to, you know, generate revenue, this, that, and the other, but it also puts you in the system. Um, and that's okay. what I was asking. I was hoping that Willie would be on board because I wanted to, to just, you know, have a first oh. opinion. And and my thing is we have as a as the, the church the remnant. We have allowed, okay. for instance, if there's going to be a divorce, um, shouldn't we be dealing with that within the church? If there, if, you know, when there's problems like that, shouldn't we be dealing with that in the church? Uh, I mean, I hear where you're coming from, but I mean, let me just get something straight, though. Like, even if you buy property, you have to, like, mm-hmm. get it turned on. Like, I mean, you got to go through the government authorities of the property. Like, you've got to go, like, to get your light bill 
turned on and like to get your light on electricity and, and your, your you know your gas like you know you still got to deal with the government you know what I mean so well, that's it's not really matter. like that's a material matter that's yeah material. I mean I, I mean well what if you what if you get it rigged what if you do somebody what if you go around it and get somebody to um you know do it for you who you knows who got who got a connection you're gonna get locked up you gonna get a drug. Well, that, again, that's a material matter, not a spiritual. We're talking the, the difference between spiritual matters and material matters. But because, marriage, but marriage. And, I, and why did you bring that up? Since I was one of them dudes that well, did well, that I, thirty well, years ago. Well, 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 can I can I add, can I finish to what you just said when you said it's a spiritual matter? Marriage isn't entirely a spiritual matter, and not entirely because check this out. Who sanctifies it? It's the it's the believing spouse that sanctifies it. So it's not entirely, and some people are stuck, so we ain't going to just be like, you know, picking cherries here. We, I mean, we're going to deal with the whole overall meat of marriage, not just like, okay, well, we're going to deal with the sanctified things. No, because some people are yoked together with unbelievers who are connected to the world, and we have to just deal with that. You know what I mean? Like, that's not really, I'm a lover, not a fighter. You know what I'm saying? Like, I fight you in certain areas, but I got to, like, for example, when I street preach, right? Totally uh-huh. think it all. I get all. I get all, brother. I'm not one of those kind of street preachers that just sit there and fight. And I think because of my demeanor, people kind of get me twisted because they don't realize what kind of what kind of kind of fellow you're dealing with here. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. I know when to fight. I know when. What do you say? Know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you gotta know when to hold them and know when to fold them. You know what I'm saying? You got to know. You know what I'm saying? You gotta know, yeah. brother. So. This ain't really even about that, man. It's not even about fights about every little thing. We got bigger weighty matters going on. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And I think that's what we got to focus on, those weighty matters. How you feel about that? I feel that as far as weighty matters go, uh, the church, again, is giving up its authority and has allowed the world to just, instead of us being the salt and light of the world, We've allowed the world to come in as evidenced by Islam, as evidenced by the Church of Beyonce, and blah, 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 and all this other um, apostasy and heresies that are going on. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, to me, it all starts with marriage. It all starts with the family because that's God's example, how he works through us to show us his love to where we're supposed to show the world. Okay. I mean, you know. But I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, man, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Because at the end of the day, like, okay, am I going to go in, in the deep church of Beyonce? And like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I mean, me going inside of the church of Beyonce and rebuking them, I mean, what's that? They're not even really a church. For real. That's, that's, that's not even a church anyway. So, I mean, you got a, a Satanist church in San Francisco and all up in the Bay Area. You know, all of it. I mean, I'm not about to go over there and be like, hey, y'all said church. Church is an assembly. That's all it means. <laughs> that's all it means is assembly. You just assemble well, together, well, worshiping the Beyonce. But would you, uh, as a street preacher, stand outside outside the church and witness to the people as they came out? I mean, witness, I mean, it depends. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I go out to street preach, right, when I go out and preach, I mean, you know, like, especially when it was me and my brother Roy, you know what I mean? Like, we would pray. I would pray. Pray for about two hours, you know what I'm saying? Two, three, four hours, whatever. An hour, you know what I'm saying? But, but you're going to hear an hour, be focused. I mean, it's an hour praying going on. And with that being said, like, you're going to get some guidance. And if you don't, you know what I'm saying? You're going to still go most of the time. And the most of the time that we went, you know what I'm saying? Even if he didn't tell us in prayer, he would tell us on the way. Or sometimes he ain't tell us. And we just say, you know what, let's go over here. And then we just go. And then next thing you know, God will manifest. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean... <laughs> When you street preach, man, when you when you out here preaching, you don't just do willy nilly stuff. You know what I mean? You don't just hey man, let's go over here. Like 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 I don't just say, oh, I'm going over here. It's a, it's a gay parade. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> and I see people do that on YouTube, and I ain't with that. That's not how I roll. I don't I don't do that. I'm not I don't even I'm not even um, impressed by that. It's just like you just doing that just to go start a fight. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm not I'm not impressed. So you I'm not we'll impressed. That up. We'll pick that up on the other side of the break here. Uh, you folks, you're with Jonathan Kaol. Uh He's a YouTube creator and a street preacher. He goes out there amongst amongst the people. So we'll be back to continue this conversation after these messages. All right. 
Rach are back. We have the last 25 minutes of the show here. We are on with Jonathan Kayall, a YouTube creator and a street preacher that takes the word out to the highways and the byways. People that usher them into the kingdom of God. And we left off talking about those that have the, they feel the compunction to go out and address the the unbelievers where they're at instead of waiting for them to come to them. And, you know, I respect your your approach to it, but I also uh, respect someone like Coach Dave Dobbenmeyer of uh, Past Assault Ministries, and they do go out to the homosexual parade and witness to those people. They do go to the, uh, the murder of the unborn clinics, and they speak to the women and to try to share the gospel as well as um, solutions to their situations. And, you know, I feel like everybody has their calling that they have to walk in. So, you know, as far as being impressed, I guess that doesn't enter into my lexicon with those with uh, individuals as far as what God calls them to do. But what is your method? Would you, when you go out there, uh, you know, how do you pick your venue or you know how do you go about doing this john um uh, uh let me think um uh how do i do it i just seek the lord man you know sometimes i just go out with my brother you know what i mean i just uh i just go out with my brother me and my brother sometimes we go preach together sometimes i go by myself and just pass out tracks you know and i don't pray every time i do go do it you know what i mean like i i'll just be on the go Maybe pumping gas, get somebody a track. You know, uh, I mean, it's just, you know, or um, well, sometimes I just feel compelled, you know, um, spending time. I mean, the Lord called me out of prayer one time, you know, when I was praying in church. Um, matter of fact, to be honest with you, the pastor was preaching about. And um, I got up from prayer. The Lord showed me a vision. He told me, he showed me where to go, to go to archive station. Um, I had my, I had my, um, my bullhorn in my backpack. I was riding my bike. I went ahead and rode down there, and um, and it was a slew of saints already there preaching the gospel, but they just needed an English interpreter. You know what I'm saying? So they were uh they were all Spanish, and um they all had these big huge flags. You know um I seen them in prayer. I seen the location in prayer. I didn't see no saints, so I just went like you said, go wherever the lambs say go. You know what I mean? And um you know I mean man. You know, you can't make this stuff up. Like, I mean, some things are gimmicks. I think a lot of people, they say they this is their calling. Like, I mean, this calling ain't really just predictable. You feel me? Like, it ain't no predictable calling. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you see what Moses had to go through. You see what John had to go through. Like, you see what all these people had to go through. They, they, they wasn't just, okay, we'll be doing this every day. Like, it's not like that, man. It's when you get caught. Like, okay, we're talking about the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. You see, he'll lead and guide us in all truth. And the Holy Spirit, it's good. It says about the Holy Spirit, it says that it, um, like the wind, you know what I mean? And the wind, you, it says you don't know which way it goes. You don't know whether it comes or goes. So it's not really about like, okay, this is what I'm called to. Now, if that's your job, I got a sister in Christ who, um, you know, she works at a, 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 a abortion prevention clinic. You know what I mean? Praise God, glory to God for her. Woman of God, mighty woman of God. Shout out to her. Shout out to her, my sister Jen, Nicole. You know what I mean? You know, mm-hmm. shout out to my sister Hannah, Paulette, you know, Brother Devin, Brother Rayshawn, all y'all. Praise God for y'all, you know. Um, but yeah, man, you know, I mean, it is what it is. You know, you don't just, you don't just go where you go. You know, I mean? you go where the lamb says go. You just, you follow by the Holy Spirit. So you don't just, you don't just go wherever you want to go, man. You know, I mean, we could always slap a, a, a call on it. Like, oh yeah, this is my call. You know what I mean, but to me, from, from, from my, um, from my, uh, usual, you know, um, Preaching the gospel, me and my brother Brandon, shout out to him. You know what I'm saying? Um, when we, were, you know, he was around when me and brother Roy was preaching. You know what I mean? That was like, I say, I emphasize that because a lot took place afterwards, where um, you know, a lot of, a lot of um, in my ministry, you know, a lot has been attacked, but um, and I brought things upon myself. But you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you know, um, yeah, you're not just going out willy nilly, just going, oh, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go there, or you're not even just like, oh, this is my calling. I'm just going to only preach this street. I don't, I, he said go into the byways and the highways, you know, um, 
and um, he didn't just say one. Like you're just continuing with going, and you're just, you know, you're you're not you're not trying to pitch. We're not trying to pitch no Jesus here. We don't want to put him in a little box. And um, you know, we talk about God here. You know, what I mean, God is not just going to have you just people like they say. You know, I'm called to the homosexual. I'm called to the the pornograph in, industry. And I just come against pornography. And it's like God is much bigger than that. Sure, He'll use you real quick with that kind of stuff. But like. I don't think nobody's calling this just that simplistic where they just, because it, it, it makes the Holy Spirit predictable and, and biblical according to the word of God. The Holy Spirit doesn't, he's not, he's not spoken of that way, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, biblically, he's not spoken that way. You know, like, even like I just said earlier, wherever the lamb says go, wherever. So, that doesn't mean that the lamb's going to have you here. You know what I mean? And he's just going to keep going there. And he might have you there for a long time, but that doesn't mean you're just gonna keep going there, you know. One day the Lord, I was, I was um, ordained as a youth pastor in this one church, and I was there for a while. They just ordained me as a youth pastor, like you said earlier. Thank, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I feel you when you said that. They, they, Hosea, you quoted that scripture. I'm, I'm with you on that, my brother, because it's true. You know, they or the call, they wanted these kings, but in them wanting those kings, you know, God to give you over. I mean, and that's the scripture that I quoted when he gave him over. <clears throat> but um, in that collective, you know, they, you know, called me to um, be like an ordained little youth pastor or whatever. You know what I mean? And um, like right in the midst of that, God called me out of that church. And I was with it. It wasn't like I was opposing them. But God called me out. He said, I'm transferring you. He told me audibly. That was one of the few first times I heard him uh, like that. He told me, you know, I'm transferring you. He sent me to this church. He said, um, project. He said, what did he say? Uh, public housing center. I ain't never knew what he was talking about. And um, then I found out, oh, he's talking about this church, the project. And it, he called it public housing temple. And I went in there. And, you know, God told me. I mean, he told me what to tell him. And the church shut down. Like I'd say, like, he told me that the church about to shut down. And it shut down, like, in a, like two weeks later, it shut down. You know what I mean? And so, like, he'll tell you. You don't just do. He'll tell you. You know what I mean? He'll tell you, go here, go there. Go here, don't do that. Go there. I was reading the scripture not that long ago with King David. God told me, yeah, go in a war. Yeah, go go to go in a war. I'm with you. And then he went in the war. And then, then the next, like, in that same chapter, he's like, no, don't go in the war. You know what I mean? So he didn't go. You know what I mean? So that's why you got to be real careful. You got to be real careful, brother. And it sounds like you're talking about discernment. It's discernment of the, of the uh, voice of the Lord versus the voice of another shepherd as jesus talked about you know that his sheep will know his voice and you have to be able to discern uh your own desires as well as the influence of the enemy to come against you to do something that is out of god's will uh that's what i'm getting out of what you're saying there yeah and then just not being so overly zealous just 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 to have ministry you know what i mean Sometimes we just get overly zealous with ministry, just ministry. You know what I'm saying? Ministry. We be so hooked up on that ministry. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then before you know it, man, you done missed God. You know? Yeah. And And that's one of the biggest. That's one of the biggest things right there, brother. I think. Oh, looks like looks like we got a looks like we got a caller here that wants to come in. So let's see what they have to to offer. Uh, welcome, caller, to Politics and Prophecy. Well, you got a comment or a question? Uh, yeah, I just got a comment. Uh, my name is uh, Deshaun Jones, by the way. I'm from Columbus, Ohio. And I just uh, mm-hmm. thank God for what you guys are talking about. And something he said, he said, uh, how we can be we so tired of the ministry, we can miss God. <laughs> That's like the, the biggest problem in, in the church today where uh, we're so concerned with what the people think or um, uh, uh, being exalted amongst man that we forget or we ignore what God has called us to. It's the same thing with Saul. He was so concerned about what the people thought about him that uh, he he did. So regardless of what the prophet told him that God said to do, he wanted to do what seemed pleasing to the people as opposed to what seemed pleasing to God. And uh, I think uh, David was the opposite. He had his problems, his flaws, but ultimately he wanted to please God, regardless of Amen. what other people thought, regardless of what you know, what I'm saying um, what he what may have seemed to be the most prestigious route. And it's just something because mm-hmm. we were talking about this in Bible study today, talking about pride and how we will make decisions based 
on our pride, and we were talking about uh, the pride of life, how it, even in the church, the pride of life can be, I'm going to do this and, and operate in something I know God ain't called me to because it puts me in a prestigious seat in the church. Even though God's going to lead his church months ago, <laughs> because they get ready to ordain me, I'm going to stay. It's amazing, man, but we got to learn to not fail. And uh, regardless of what, you know, what man is saying or what we desire in our hearts, what is God saying? And I think Brother Jonathan, he makes that clear in a, a lot of what he says. And uh, he, he faces a lot of things. I know this brother, man, I met, I, I followed him on YouTube from, from back in 2013. And uh, it was just, uh, I learned a lot about denying myself and about uh, this walk, about pleasing God, and about following the scriptures more so than following the church. Lingo or church politics, so man, it's just a blessing to listen to. This. Well, I, I appreciate I you taking the time place. to call in and contribute those wise words, Rashad. I, I thank you, and uh, I hope you'll keep listening. And uh, that will be politics and prophecy will be a blessing to you. My brethren. Amen. Amen. Thank All you. Right. You guys have a blessed night. You too. You too, brother. All right. Well, hey. There you go. Um, one of your YouTube, one of your YouTube uh, followers. That's awesome uh, for them to call. Oh no, no, he be on YouTube. He was being, he was being, <laughs> he was being uh meek. That's my brother, man. That's that's a straight up brother. That's my brother, man. You know, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, his 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 baby's my niece. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> I you got know? you. I got yeah. you. And then, you know, the funny thing is, he's from Columbus. Uh, and um, uh, I've got a lot of people in Columbus. I've got a lot of people in Columbus. He probably doesn't know I'm up here in Flint, Michigan, but yeah, I got a lot of people down there. But yeah, as, as, we, as we wrap Praise this God. up, um, you know, he talked about the, the pride of life and the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh. And that seems to be the things that gets us in the most trouble in our life, whether it be as an unbeliever or even as a believer, we can succumb to those same influences if we're not careful to put on the armor of God daily and walk in his word daily. We can we can stumble. But you know what? If we are in you know, that whole armor of God, that is our protection in this world that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and we know that. So uh, I'll give you the last word here before we uh, we end your portion of this show. What? What? What's up? What, what, what am I supposed to be saying? What are you talking about? <laughs> Wait a minute, man. You don't have the script in front of you that I gave you? Prescription? The script. That's <laughs> what you said. What am oh. I supposed to say? You don't have the script? You didn't get I, that in well, Hold on. How does it work? Well, how do I end it? I don't understand. Like, what am I supposed to no, do? Tell how do we, how, I've never been on the radio. Tell people how they can get a hold of you, uh, where they can okay. see your material. And, uh, and uh, that's that's it. Keep it simple. Okay, well, my uh, email is 7KO, uh, my last name, 7CAYOL at gmail.com. I'm on Facebook, Jonathan KO. I'm on YouTube, Jonathan KO. My sister probably going to get mad. <laughs> she probably won't be to say my name. She she gonna get mad if, if, if she was already mad right now. Yeah. I already said her name, but um, I got JonathanKO.com, and you know what I'm saying I I ain't feeling all that. I ain't with all that gimmick stuff. I'm gonna just be real. You know what I'm saying? She responsible for that, man. Bang, there it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> now what, what's her what's her name? My sister Paula. She in the cut. Oh, sister Paula, Paula in the cut. Yeah. All right. Well, praise you know the Lord, Paula. Praise like, the Lord. Hey, hey, hello, yeah. All, All right. right. So that's the, the name of the YouTube channel. If they just go in there and search. She's my IP tech. That's my IP tech. Say it again. Oh, man. I need, I need her working with me again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, oh, man. She's official. Yeah, you, yeah she wants that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, I tell yeah, you what, oh, yeah. I am I am grateful for your gracious gift of time to come on today. So I'll just say that uh, may the Lord continue to bless and anoint and protect and put a hedge of protection around you as well as your loved ones and that you continue to just be an inspiration and continue to bring the fire, bring the fire, never get lukewarm, bring that fire that we need Thank you, today Jay. because this, 
this light is, you know, there's, there's so much darkness uh, that is continuing to proliferate throughout this earth, and we need all the light we can get because it's not going to get any, any. It's not going to get better. Thank you, uh, as far as the things that you know are coming to pass, and we need every brother and sister who is truly of the remnant of the in the body those that are about relationship and not religion, we need those like Rashad and, and others. We need those people to stand Rashawn. up. Yeah. Righteous. Rashawn, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Rashawn, we need them to stand up in this day and age with the boldness that we have in authority through Jesus Christ and, this, and through his blood. So I appreciate you, brother, and I'll be talking to you. Well, God bless you, brother. I appreciate everything, man. God bless your whole platform. God bless you. All right. Thank you, brother. All right, all right, folks. That is Jonathan, Jonathan Kaoff, and we're very happy to have him on board. And so, 